success takes hard work, perseverance, stamina, and holding fast to core beliefs. But an out-of-control government has put the dream in jeopardy. Eight out of ten Americans think it's harder to achieve the dream now than before, and will be even worse for the next generation. Somebody else made that happen. Fortunately, a powerful voice has arisen to put we the people back in charge, to revitalize the dream. The modern-day Tea Party movement is stronger than ever. Grassroots are growing deeper. Millions of patriots are organizing locally. New, conservative, principled leaders are emerging. The hope for a better tomorrow is strong because everybody deserves the opportunity to pursue the American dream. Tea Party Patriots, pursue your American dream. Your nation, your news. Coming up on One American News. National and international news, credible and unbiased, 24-7. Stay tuned as we bring you the latest headlines from across the nation and around the world. 6,000 people, please. We will not block their conservative message. We will be their platform. Political talk shows, substantive, bold, and comprehensive. The left says they're, they're all about other people's ideas until they realize other ideas exist. There are too many taxes, too many regulations, too much government intervention in people's lives for this economy to grow. A new voice, your voice, for one America. Contact your cable provider and demand they carry One America News Network today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable John Cornyn, U.S. Senator from Texas. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be with you this morning. I want to thank uh, Al Cardenas and our friends at the American Conservative Union, and more, most importantly, all of you for all the work you do around the year to promote the conservative message. I have to admit, my friend Governor Perry is kind of a tough act to follow this morning, <laughs> but it's a privilege to do so. Under his leadership, Texas has shown the world that conservative economic policies absolutely do lead to growth and prosperity. I can tell we have a few Texans in the House this morning. Call it an experiment in one of our nation's laboratories of democracy, if you like, but quite a successful one compared to the failed experiment in big government during the last five years under President Obama. Now, I'm not sure CPAC's ever had two Texans speak back to back before, uh, but that takes a little chutzpah on their part and maybe a little patience on yours. But let me just uh, bend your ear for a few minutes this morning. I promise you I'll be brief, but I don't want my brevity to distract from the seriousness of the topic. Because this morning, what I want to talk to you about is accountability. Specifically, the importance of accountability in our government and its shocking abandonment by the Obama administration. Accountability is a fundamental virtue. We hold in high esteem people who are accountable to themselves, to their families, and to God. American history, of course, is filled with stories that celebrate the accountability of some of our greatest leaders. From the founding father who famously could not tell a lie, to one of the founders of our party known as Honest Abe. We as a nation celebrate accountability, and of course it makes sense to do so. Not just because it's a morally admirable trait, but because this entire experiment in self-government depends on it. Thomas Paine said a body of men holding themselves accountable to nobody ought not to be trusted by anybody. As public servants, we must be forthright in our actions and fully accountable to those that we have the privilege to serve. As citizens, we must hold those in public office to the highest standard of accountability. 
because unaccountability has always been the refuge of autocrats, scandal makers, and stubbornly bad government policy. For the last five years now, five long years, President Obama has put this maxim to the test. For five years, he's advocated for a larger, more intrusive federal government. And for five long years, the President's refused to take responsibility for his own actions. So let's look at the record briefly. When it was revealed that Eric Holder's Justice Department had knowingly allowed weapons to be smuggled to Mexican drug cartels, did we get accountability? We got a cover-up. When one of those weapons showed up at the murder scene of U.S. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, I ask you, did we get accountability? When the President invoked executive privilege and put damning evidence under lock and key, when a career State Department official dared to speak the truth about that terrible night in Benghazi, a night when four Americans lost their lives, did we get accountability? He was punished for his honesty. When it came to light that the IRS was targeting Americans whose only offense was to disagree with the President, did we get accountability? We got a campaign donor to the Obama campaign instead, appointed to lead the, quote, so-called investigation. And then, of course, there's Obamacare. Where do we even begin? When the website that Americans must use to purchase government-mandated health care didn't work, did we get accountability? We were told the errors were great problems to have. When it was discovered that there were no criminal background checks for Obamacare navigators, people employed to handle sensitive personal information, did we get accountability? In fact, Secretary Sebelius told me herself that convicted felons could be hired as navigators. When people like Glenn Barlow of Plano, Texas lost his health insurance, he found the only comparable plan was 65 percent more expensive and included maternity care, which he didn't need. Did we get accountability there? We were told that people like Glenn were thrilled with their options. Thrilled. The fact of the matter is we conservatives predicted things like this would happen. When Obamacare was debated in Congress, we screamed from the rooftops that it just wouldn't work, that it would be a job killer, that it would absolutely make health care more expensive and less accessible for millions of Americans. And for pointing this out, we were mocked and disparaged by President Obama and his liberal allies. We were accused of somehow being heartless and misinformed. But now, four years later, our predictions have come true. And I ask you, has the President shown any accountability? Instead, we've gotten waivers, delays, and minced words over exactly what the President meant when he promised you and me and all Americans that if you like what you have, you can keep it. So as conservatives, what can we do? It does us no good to simply point to these facts and say, I told you so, because the status quo is not written in stone. And if the last five years have taught us anything about our liberal friends, it's that they don't get accountability. But while they may be a lost cause, the future of our great country is never a lost cause. And if we're going to get back to the America that our forefathers handed down to us, the America that our children and grandchildren deserve, we must foster a new era of accountability. And here's the simple fact about conservatives. We're pretty good at holding people accountable. That's why conservatives must lead 
in rebuilding this new culture of accountability. For starters, we need to hold the House of Representatives in this next election. And then we must take back the Senate. We must win in Arkansas, Virginia, West, West Virginia, North Carolina, Louisiana, Montana, and other states. And we must lead the charge all over the electoral map, including Nebraska. Because that's how we will take back the White House in 2016. So together, let's support conservative candidates. Let's win, and let's bring accountability back to Washington, D.C. So let's get to work. Thank you, and God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Good morning.